And it started when I was 25. ABC News sent me to be a digital reporter in the Islamic Republic of Iran with a backpack and a camera and an order to bring back stories for an American audience. And my career really rose alongside the rise of Twitter. So I found myself enmeshed in this global conversation. They wanted to understand what was happening in the Middle East. They wanted to understand a part of the world that was half a world away. And they really wanted to wrap their heads around what was a gradual evolution in the Middle East that turned into an overnight revolution in the same part of the world. So in December 2011, what we call the Arab Spring took root. Syria was the last one in the sequence. And partially because of that, it got the least attention. The media spotlight had moved on. And that's the moment that really changed my life. Because I know Syria. I know the people in Syria. And I know that that story was the biggest example I had seen of an issue that was so highly consequential and just hardly comprehensible. People could not wrap their heads around how complex that story was. So I took a time out from television and built Syria deeply. We actually hacked the news cycle. People who were at the intersection of old and new media could, could see exactly what we were doing. We were building a scalable model to take on foreign news, especially when it comes to crisis zones that really don't get all that much attention. Because we really don't have that much room to innovate from within news organizations. We have to step outside. We have to create new models. And what we were doing was basically building an open source R&D lab as practitioners, as journalists who wanted to take on the story a different way. That our failure to understand what's happening in the world has become an American liability. It's already hurting us in this generation, and it's going to shape outcomes for the coming generations unless we find a quantum leap to change how we approach understanding the world around us.